The Tesla Semi should soon be in mass production and it looks like version 2.0 will feature a design refresh based on a recent sighting. Follow along as I discuss not only that, but also share some new results from real world testing and give an update on the Tesla Semi factory and more. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. Although the Tesla Semi has been in production for several years now, the current version of the truck is technically still a prototype. Version 2.0 is what I'm calling their new mass production version of the truck, which will certainly have changes as compared to the current prototype version based on what they've learned from real world testing. While many of the changes will likely be mechanical and not necessarily visually obvious, there is a great chance that the truck could see an exterior refresh similar to what Tesla did with the Model Y, for example. Zangler, Tesla semi advocate on YouTube, who also goes by at Henrik Zane on X, has been following the construction progress of the Tesla semi factory going up near Gigafactory, Nevada, and he recently caught some video footage of a Tesla semi under wraps. As he posted on X, it sure looks like this is a refreshed version of the truck. And based on the shape of the front of the truck, the obvious line across the front there, it looks like this is going to feature a new design with a Cybertruck or Model Y style light bar design instead of the current headlights. In order to get a better idea of what this might actually look like, I asked ChatGPT to draw a Tesla Semi, but replace the front headlights with a Cybertruck inspired light bar. And this is what it came up with. I think the design that it came up with is amazing and I hope the truck looks somewhat like this with a refresh. I believe it looks much better with a light bar as compared to the headlights it has now. With that being said, please do me a big favor and go subscribe to Zangler on YouTube and watch his videos because it helps support his efforts to keep tabs on the Tesla Semi factory and Tesla Semi developments. I'm definitely looking forward to finding out more about version 2.0 of the Tesla Semi because even the current prototype version is performing extremely well in real world testing and it's massively outperforming the competition. Some of the biggest ways that the truck outshines the competition revolve around not only the truck's efficiency, which is class leading, but also the sheer amount of real world range that the truck actually gets. Now in past videos, I have shared results from several other real world tests from PepsiCo, for example, Seiya and DHL, and those results were really impressive. However, I'd like to share a new real world test result that is also really impressive. ABF Freight, an ARC best carrier, recently shared results from their nearly 4,500 mile testing of the truck. They announced this in a post on X and shared a link to an article which provides way more details than the basic post. In this article, it's written over a three week period, ABF operated a Tesla semi across typical dispatch lanes, including over the road routes between service centers in Reno, Nevada and Sacramento, California. The pilot also included regional runs in the Bay Area and rail shuttle operations. The electric semi logged 4,494 miles, averaging 321 miles per day with an overall energy efficiency of 1.55 kilowatt hours per mile. Even in this first little section of the article, there's a lot of positive things to highlight. First of all, this vehicle, this Tesla semi was used not only for regional runs, but also for over the road routes. As a reminder, when you look at the Tesla semi competition, it's pretty much the only truck that truly can be used for over the road routes, for longer routes because of its ability to drive up to 500 miles on a single charge. There's no other electric semi truck on the market that can do that right now. So that really opens up a lot of use cases for the electric Tesla semi truck as compared to the competition. Now, when I say that the Tesla semi really is the only electric semi truck on the market that can be used for over the road operations. One of the reasons I make that claim comes down to some testing that was done back in 2023, the run on less event in 2023, where Tesla semis, Freightliner E Cascadias and Volvo VNR electric trucks were tested by various companies. And in this testing, a Tesla semi in a single day was able to drive over a thousand miles. In addition for the PepsiCo Tesla semi fleet, the average miles per day was 613 miles. When you compare that to the competition, it's not even close. 
The fleet average for the Freightliner E Cascadia with the OK Produce line was 204 miles. Also, when you look at the total distance for this testing, the PepsiCo Tesla semi-fleet logged over 27,000 miles, and the closest runner-up, the performance team with their Volvo VNR fleet, only logged a little bit over 5,200 miles, so not even close to 27 plus thousand miles. I used Google Maps to find out the distance between the ABF service center in Reno, Nevada and Sacramento, California. And it looks like that's about a 146 mile trip one way. So a nearly 300 mile round trip with the efficiency numbers that ABF was getting there, 1.55 kilowatt hours per mile. The truck can easily do that round trip on a single charge and still have range left. Beyond that, I want to highlight the truck's efficiency, that efficiency of 1.55 kilowatt hours per mile. That's really impressive and is better than a lot of the other previous tests that I've seen. And in addition, it's important to point out here that this was for a mix of regional and over the road routes. I'm not sure how many of those miles were over the road and how many miles were regional, but nonetheless, this was for a mix of driving with a very impressive efficiency there. Now on Tesla's website, the efficiency of the truck is listed at less than two kilowatt hours per mile. And when you look at actual real world testing for lighter loads, Frito-Lay has seen an average efficiency with a Tesla semi of 1.29 kilowatt hours per mile. ABF Freight, once again, 1.55 kilowatt hours per mile. For Pepsi's testing, 1.61 kilowatt hours per mile. DHL, 1.72 kilowatt hours per mile. And SEA, 1.73 kilowatt hours per mile. So in real world operations, the Tesla Semi definitely lives up to what Tesla promises with an efficiency under two kilowatt hours per mile and quite a bit under that, especially when you get lighter loads like the Frito-Lay loads, but even heavier loads like for example with Pepsi, that's still a great efficiency, well under two kilowatt hours per mile. Now moving on to more details in that article, it was written, the vehicle performed well across a variety of routes, including the 7200 climb over Donner Pass and generally matched the performance of its diesel counterparts. Now I do find this a little bit amusing that they said it generally matched the performance of its diesel counterparts because the Tesla Semi going over Donner Pass should be able to much outperform diesel counterparts when it comes to the actual availability of torque and acceleration up the steep inclines. Even with a load, the Tesla Semi should be able to perform much, much better than a diesel Semi. Beyond that, in this article, it was written, quote, Driver feedback was positive with operators noting the vehicle's comfort, safety, and ease of use. Features like the center seat configuration, wide visibility, and intuitive controls contributed to strong driver experience. With that being said, that really takes me to my next topic, and that's an update on the mass production Tesla Semi factory that's being built right now near Gigafactory, Nevada. Now, back during the 2024 IAA Transportation Expo event, Dan Priestley reiterated that this mass production factory would be, quote, scaling production throughout 2026. Now that we're more than halfway through 2025, that's not very far away, but notice the language scaling production, not starting production in 2026, but scaling production in 2026. This lines up nicely with a video that Tesla shared back in April, which features Dan Priestley and shows what the inside of the factory looked like around two and a half months ago. I'm Dan Priestley and I lead the semi program here at Tesla. Welcome to the inside of the semi factory up here on the Gigafactory Nevada campus. We've been spending the last several months constructing this building, mostly with the walls, all of the pillars and columns that you see behind me, laying concrete, putting the roof on, and now it's time to populate the building. This factory is designed with an annual capacity of 50,000 units a year. So over the next several quarters, we're going to be industrializing this factory, installing the equipment and preparing for high volume production. First units are set to be on the line by the end of this year, and we'll be ramping the factory throughout 2026. Now in a much more recent update, Zengler, the Tesla semi advocate once again on YouTube, shared a video on his YouTube channel and this video was filmed on July 2nd of this year and posted on July 3rd. And based on this recent drone footage, you can see that the outside of the factory is nearly complete. In addition, based on a heavy haul truck that was previously seen driving down the road with heavy assembly equipment on the back of the truck, and now a similar truck or that same truck was seen parked on the factory grounds, Henrik Zane in this video believes that Tesla is now installing production equipment in the factory. So it looks very feasible that Tesla could start initial production of the Tesla Semi in this factory before the end of the year. 
With that being said, once again, I recommend you go over and subscribe to Zangler on YouTube so you can follow future developments. But in addition to that, Zangler also shared footage on his YouTube channel of a standard range Tesla semi driving down the road. As a reminder, the standard range Tesla semi truck will have 300 miles of range as compared to their 500 mile range version. And it's going to fit great for companies that don't need quite as long range of a truck and it will bring the cost down certainly. And in addition, if they use nickel based batteries, then this truck should be quite a bit lighter than the 500 mile range version of the truck, which will help increase the payload capacity. In the past, I hoped that Tesla would use lithium iron phosphate batteries with a standard range Tesla semi, but with the tariffs in place right now for batteries that come out of China, I really doubt that's going to happen initially, maybe in the future, as Tesla starts ramping up more and more of their own domestic LFP production. But that factory that they're building out right now in Nevada, near Gigafactory Nevada, where they're going to be building their own LFP batteries, that, based on what I talked about in the previous video, is going to be used in their energy business, not in their vehicle business. But maybe in the future, that'll be the case. They'll produce LFP batteries stateside here and use those in the Tesla Semi. The standard range Tesla Semi would be a great candidate for those LFP batteries, but I don't believe that's going to happen initially. With all that being said, do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.